So I received a bachelor's degree in American studies from BYU, a master's degree in American religious history from the University of Virginia, and a PhD in US history from the University of Utah. So my primary research looks at African-American religious history, specifically religious groups that opposed integration during the 20th century civil rights movements. So if any of you have read the autobiography of Malcolm X, it's the group that he belonged to for a significant portion of his autobiography uh, before he became a Sunni Muslim in 1964. And they believed that integration wouldn't solve the racial problems of America. And so they sought to create their own sovereign black nation in order to uh, protect themselves, to protect their communities, and to create communities um, beyond the dangers of living in the United States as a black person in the mid 20th century. So race and religion often help to define each other. And there's a scholar named Judith Weisenfeld, who I really admire, that developed a term called religio-racial identity, talking about how religion and race support one another's definitions and what it means to practice a religion. So for instance, in the Nation of Islam, they identify as black, not as African American, or not as African, but as black. And it's one of those things that's important to remember that they see being black as being fundamental to being a Muslim or to being Islamic. Uh, a black person is naturally Islamic or is naturally a Muslim and converting to any other religion is unnatural. So when a black person converts to the Nation of Islam, in a way they're remembering their religious or family heritage and coming into what the Nation of Islam describes as the religion that Allah created for them. Studying religion has been foundational to my testimony of my savior, Jesus Christ. I am always looking for fresh connections to understand how and why people do the things they do. Why does someone join a religious movement? Why does someone leave a religious movement? It becomes a way of better understanding how people work and understanding the needs that they have uh, to learn to minister like the Savior would have us minister. Uh, studying religion asks a lot of scholars to think with humility about what they're doing. As a Latter-day Saint, I have a testimony of the restoration and I have a testimony of the gospel and of our church, but I I'm also constantly thinking about what is appealing about other religions to others in a way that allows me, I hope, to be able to reach those who need reaching within our own faith communities. Being at the Institute has been one of the best experiences of my life. Before becoming a postdoctoral fellow, I was in public communications here and worked on the Maxwell Institute podcast. It was such a blessing to work with Janice Johnson and Christian Heal and especially our dozen or so research assistants that were students. It was so impressive to see them do research, to hear their thoughts while they spoke as, um, as podcast guests. And it was also pretty incredible to see the way that they started to take ownership of what they were doing. It wasn't just that they were performing a task that they were being paid for, but they saw themselves as part of the team. And that's something that at the Maxwell Institute we hold central to gather and to nurture disciple scholars. So if you're interested in working at the Maxwell Institute, I'd recommend that you contact us at maxwellinstitute at byu.edu and see if there's anything available. It's something that has changed my life and I'm sure it would change yours as well.